And today we're going to talk about a huge topic, which is called digestion. You're going to learn what 95% of the population is completely missing out on. And boy, is there's anything that really gets me motivated. It's this one here, and that is digestion. Let's face it. Today we're going to we're going to put this up. Let's look at your this is this is let's this this is your stomach, okay? And here's your mouth right up here. Okay, look, this guy obviously has a big stomach. Maybe this is not yours. We're going to use this as an example. I'm a terrible drawer. So what happens is you consume food. Here's your little eye. Okay. Oh my god, that's ugly. But anyways, this goes into your digestive system. Now, remember, it's a single canal that goes right from your mouth into your stomach and then into your intestines and then comes out, well, at your butt, right? It's at your anus, right? So it's a single canal, ultimately. And that's not a very good job of our intestines, but you get the point. You can go onto Gray's Anatomy book and check out how it looks. It's very, very cool. But what happens in here is you consume food, and people make the, the misconception that if I eat something, right, so if whatever I eat, if I eat food here, people automatically assume that it goes into my body out here. Well, that's not the case. In order for you to take food and convert it into something utilizable by your body, it's got to go through the what we call the digestive process. So what I'm going to share with you uh, briefly is to give you an idea of what's, you know, how to optimize that performance. So what happens, number one, it starts with first chewing your food. So when you chew your food, the, the proper term is called mastication. What happens as you chew the food up, you start breaking the food up into smaller pieces. Now, just so you know, the smaller the food is, the easier it is to assimilate and utilize. Makes sense, right? I mean, think about it. I mean, usually the smaller, it's easier to go. It also tastes better. So by chewing food up, taking enough time to chew instead of gulping your food, what happens is your body will start to relieve a certain amount of, you know, like pitalin and stuff like that inside your body. You, you release a certain amount of enzymes right there. You also start breaking down the food that if it has enzymes present in it, like it's live food, like fruits and vegetables and things like that, it has a certain amount of enzymes in it, you start breaking down that food. Of course, myself, <clears throat> I'll take enzymes beforehand so I know that I'm, I'm ready to go. Then what happens is the food comes down into here, into your stomach. This is your stomach. So what happens when it goes in here? Well, a lot of people think there's a big pile of acid in their stomach acid just waiting to break this stuff down. That's not the case. First, it goes into the what they call the upper cardiac portion. So this is for the first 30 minutes to an hour, 60 minutes. What happens is your food goes into there. Now, the enzymes present in the food are going to start breaking down that food. If there's no enzymes present, what happens is your body starts producing enzymes way down here in the intestine tract. It recognizes, uh oh, we don't have enough food here. But what ha but this is critical. Because after this period of time, what comes in is hydrochloric acid, H HCl. Or, you know, hydrochloric acid. I'll just put that down there as acid. Okay? Sometimes called HCl. So hydrochloric acid now comes into the body. What that does, it starts changing the pH. And as the pH change, different enzymes become either active or inactive depending on what's going on and this is very whoops this is very very critical because what happens is these enzymes start breaking these chunks of food into smaller and smaller pieces again this is what enzymes do right they start breaking that down so before it goes into the intestinal tract where you're going to absorb your food this is a critical junction in enzymes. So people who eat an enzyme deficient diet, a lot of cooked food, they're sending too big a chunks into the digestive system. Now you have a problem because the bigger the chunks that come in here, the harder it is to break down. So first level, chewing your food properly. Second level, having enough in here. 
then the stomach acid comes in, starts changing the pH. When it comes out, again, you're going to use those. We talked about these in an earlier lesson. Barcarbonate buffers to buffer the acids after the enzymes have activated so that so the pH of this goes. By the way, if you don't do this very well, what happens is you start producing little perforations in here which are called ulcers. So people that have ulcers, they usually have a, 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 a bacteria population issue. You want to look to that one. They also are eating foods that are, no, are generally enzyme deficient and it starts contributing to their ulcer. And of course, once they get to a certain state, then just about everything upsets it. But you can correct this. And the idea is you can correct it through the right action, clean food, frequent meals, enzymes, probiotics, and making sure you limit it. Now, again, once this food enters in here, here's where the probiotics, the good bacteria, right? This is the good guys, good bacteria. You can follow me here, going off to the edge of my screen. So the good bacteria start working and they act like little lawn mowers. It's kind of like, you know, you cut the grass and you have that mulcher that goes on. They're going in and they're mulching up this food into a level that it'll cross the intestinal tract. Inside you have these little villa, like micro villa, and these little guys live in there. And that's why you want to have the right population. If your probiotic population is off in here, what happens, it becomes harder to digest food. The other thing is, if you've got bad bacteria, the bad guys in here, Here's what happens with bad bacteria. The bad bacteria start feeding off the undigested food, particularly undigested proteins. Okay, this is the big one. Undigest I'm going to put undigested. Bad bacteria love undigested proteins. And what they do is they produce a whole lot of toxins. And those toxins start to affect how we think. You ever wake up in the morning and you had that brain fog, or you, know, you had that night out or whatever, and you feel like that? That's because the bad bacteria are literally producing chemical byproducts, waste materials, like running a car exhaust inside your brain or whatever. Not exactly, but you get the idea. And these toxins from the bad guys bad bacteria, they start creating poisons and those poisons go right up here into your brain. And they start affecting your thoughts. They start making you feel tired and groggy and unhappy. And guess what? Then, you know, you go to the doctor and they're like, oh, they look and they go, well, hey, you're feeling depressed all the time. Maybe you need an antidepressant or maybe you're having trouble. And then if this continues to proliferate and keeps going on and on, you start getting buildups of undigested food in here. And that's called mucoid plaque and you know some people say oh you know some medical people say oh there's no such thing as mucoid plaque well you know what you can go to a colon therapist and go do a series of um, you know colon therapies col colon cleanses you do a colon cleanse and that's what they they push uh, water or certain nutrients up inside the intestinal tract in here and then they flush out your colon and let me tell you you start seeing stuff that comes out of your intestines that have been there for a long time. Uh, you know, a funny story is I, when my colon therapist, you know, I go maybe once every couple of years and I get my whole body cleaned out over a few sessions. And once you get clean, it's okay. But he was telling me about one of his clients had literally, had a little, came out inside the tube, came out a little Barbie doll slipper. A slipper literally came out and she goes, oh my God, I swallowed that when I was four years old. She was in her 40s. You can imagine that that piece of plastic had been sitting around there for like 40 years or 35 years, something like that. Imagine that. What's going on inside your body? So as we get older, we get this distended stomach. We get the buildup of plaque. We don't digest our food as well. We eat in a hurry from busy lifestyles. We don't have enough enzymes. We don't have enough probiotics. So there we start getting digestive issues. And if you look, one of the biggest, thing, one of the biggest sellers are things like digestive aids antacid pills because they're trying to produce you know too much hydrochloric acid which there's also h pylori which is a bacteria that contributes to that all of these things are messing up your digestion and here's the beauty of it this will you know the other thing is i just before i get to that you're all, this will also throw up elimination realize realize this meal in one meal in should be meal out so in other words Every time you eat, you probably should have a bowel movement. Figure that out. 
So if you're doing that regularly, you're having, you know, if you're eating three meals a day, three good bowel movements a day, if you're not, you're building up a level of sludge in here. And that is feeding bad bacteria, which contribute to a whole lot of these. You know, they produce things like indol, skate, all these sort of toxins. Won't get into the details here. But how do you change this? How do you get to your, your, your body that, you know, optimizes the state? And this is why we created the, the course for biological optimization. Before every meal, you take your enzymes. Every night, you take your probiotics, or you can take some before you eat. You hydrate really well. By the way, hydration is critical for hydrochloric acid production, okay? So you'll produce more acid, you'll break down your food better. You take the enzymes, even if you're, especially if you're eating cooked food. Definitely want it because you want to get this pre-digestion down, and this improves elimination. And then every now and then, you can go do some colon cleanses, do some enemas, things like that. You can go through a cleanse, find that supervised by a certified practitioner. We talk about that in the Jedi Council for Health, of how you're gonna, that's coming in a later lesson. But bottom line is, Enzymes and probiotics are the optimal levels to make sure that you break down, utilize this food, and take control of your gut health. And that allows you to deliver more good food inside your body. And the other thing is this. You know, you still have to clean up your diet. But the cool, Neil, the cool thing is this. When you start doing enzymes and probiotics, it becomes easier to eat the foods that are good for you. It becomes easier to select the things that support health and it becomes easier to avoid the things that don't simply because you start feeling so darn good you just don't want to do that other stuff so that's the whole process of how it goes into i hope you learned a lot today about digestion obviously i could go into a lot more detail about this if you have questions please refer back to the biological optimization site at bioptimizers in this course you can leave a comment or ask some questions and our staff or myself will be happy to help you out because this is something that's really critical. We need to get our digestion down because that's what gets the food into your cells, which is the center of your health. So hope you enjoyed today's lesson. We'll see you on the next one coming right up. So stay with us.